Hello card fighters and today we are back with another card review. This week we got four promo cards and we see how well these four cards will fare in competitive play. The first one that we have is Cobalt Witch Poo Poo for Riker Think Fang with the auto ability on Vanguard Circle when rolled from a grade one. You can discard one card and obtain one imaginary gift protect. And then auto Rearguard Circle when it attacks, cast reveal any number of sentinels from your hand and Poo Poo will get additional plus 5k until the end of battle for every card that's revealed. So she is quite generic, which is nice, but the card is actually designed for the witch archetype. So unfortunately, witches are not very good, but what you technically could do is your right card, witch Coco, activate her ability to discard all the cards that you have, except of the Pupus and one Zozo that you have to obtain a lot of protect markers. Then send back the following turn, uh, write the Zozo and call Pupus on each of your front row regard circles. Now when you attack with the Zozo, the attack of the Zozo will trigger. And let's assume you have by now something like six protect markers. Then the Zozo will be a 42k attacker. Distribute 30k to both Pupus. Both Pupus will get additional 30k from their own attacks and they will both swing for 69. So this sounds on paper really good, but if we have to take into account that it's quite peace reliant, needs a big setup, and all you get for that is a quite strong swing turn with arguably a lot of protect markers. If you had to sand back very heavily and need these protect markers to guard for your next turn, you won't actually have enough steam to finish off your opponent next turn. Also, you just die against extra clans. So, um, it is a nice card for the Witch Archetype, nice for casual play, but I guess that's all the Witch Archetype can bring. If this card will see some experimentations and Susano Tsukuyami, I don't know. I vagger to say that I don't really think it, even though it's quite a decent on right target. So, then the next promo card that we have is our Paymoon promo card, which is the Aesthetic Baton Twirler. Aesthetic Baton Twirler has the ability that can't on Vanguard and Rearguard Circle. During your turn, she gets additional plus 5k if you call a card from your soul this turn. So it's a generic 14k attacker. And also on Vanguard and Rearguard, when placed from hand, draw one card and put one card from your hand into soul. So it is some kind of mulligan outlet and um, soul preparation. Problem is that none of the standard decks really need that. Um, we have three quite, I would be quite strong Penguin decks and standard, which are end of stage, hardy, and the silver horn archetype, and none of them really need um, baton, twirler. Since End of Stage does not really want to set up any soul, Silver Fawn is quite restricted since they only want Silver Fawns. And Hari rather wants to put their own Magi Adults throughout their guarding abilities because that's one of the bigger selling points. So um, I don't really think that Baton Twirler will fit in any of the standard decks. So, and now to the Mm, bit more interesting promo card is Deathrock of Invasion Rui, and I hope I won't trip over any Nupatama names here. Um, Rui has the auto and regard skill when placed, so plus one. Your opponent chooses one of their cards from hand is casted, and if your opponent has five or less cards after that, he or she can draw a card. And auto on Vanguard when rolled upon, so plus one. If your opponent's Vanguard is grade 2 or greater, your opponent chooses one card from his or her hand, discards it, and if the card was grade 1 or lower, your opponent, uh, you can draw a card. The problem is it's restricted in two ways. Number one is your opponent needs to be on grade 2, so you need to be the second player, you need to write that card, and then you can resolve the skill. And it can more realistically only be a plus one or minus one for your opponent because your opponent can still choose to discard a grade two or grade three and with that denying you the draw. And then what is 
Also quite a selling point for her would be the ability for Soblast 1 on Rearguard just to let your dis opponent discard one card, which sounds on paper quite good, before we realize that in practice it will not function quite well. So of course it sounds nice to let your opponent discard one card, but there will be many cases when your opponent after the discard will like have five cards, then he draws one card and then it becomes more a mulligan of your opponent. So, but we want, of course, to see it in a more positive manner. And look at Rui when she actually just lets discard your opponent one card for one Soul Blast and lets you sit up a kill turn. So, in what deck actually would Rui fit? So, there are four Nupatama archetypes there are Jamyo Kongo, Hamzo, Magatsu Storm, and Shiranui. And we have to ask ourselves in which archetype would she actually fit? And my answer is in none of them. So let's first of all see the most obvious one, which is Jamyo Kongo Premium. Um, a premature discard does not help you because <clears throat> you will write the Jamyo Kongo anyway and reduce your opponent's hand size to 4 and when you rewrite uh, to 6 and when you rewrite to 4 anyway. So it does not really help you in the early game to let your opponent discard one card. And if you think, oh, okay, it, maybe it can combo with a target lot pretty well on second right turn when my opponent has four cards and he has to mulligan one card. Well, we also have Sadamune and Tsumuji Bashu, which both did not see um, competitive success in premium. Um, Tsumuji Yashu had some experimentation, but, there, but these two cards are a Soul Blast 1, your opponent discards a card, draw one card, with an upside. And Rui does not have an upside, and her only Selling point would be the go second road upon skill, but it does not help you as said in um, Jamyo Kongo. And then we have the three other decks. First of all, we will know next week what Hanzo's skill will actually be and how the deck will be built. So for now, we cannot say that, but um, all in all, there is a great one problem in Nubatama. So we have our <coughs> Nubatama Great One Staples, which are Sakura Fubuki and Katari Gitsue. These two great ones are pretty much in every Nubatama build. And in Hanzo especially, we also have the Tatari Bui and the Kurugiri, which are both pretty good for the archetype. And now we will get another, most likely another great one that synergizes with the token mechanic of Hanzo in the upcoming clan selection with Hanzo together on Friday, which will make even tougher for Rui to actually find a place in this deck. Then we have two decks left. So we have first of all the Shiranui deck. Shiranui Standard and Premium are fairly similar. I would say that Shiranui Premium even has some more limitations since there are some G cards, which are quite interesting to play, like G uh, Fuki and the Smoke Frog. But all in all and standard, we have the, of course the Katari Gitsui and the Sakura Fubuki, but here we also have the TB, uh, Tobitashi, this is, um, which is very important for the deck. And this is, in the end, pretty much everything uh, Shiharanui plays on Great Ones in Standard. If you want to play more Great Ones, we will directly compete with the Southern Mune, which is, from the Mulligan standpoint from your opponent, very similar, but has a more consistent upside when you write him. So, in the end, if you want to fill some slots, Rui is a decent idea for Shiranui, but it will directly compete with the Southern Mune and Great One space. It's just very tough. And then we have Magatsu Storm build, which is very aggressive and got very good with the addition of um, Furai and Yado Neko. But on the Great One departure, it also wants to play the Katari Gitsui and the Sakura Fubuki, but also likes the Yaguro a lot. So here again, we have four Great Ones that Magatsu Storm really wants to play. And Wittery does not do much for the archetype. Of course, you could bounce the Rui with the Yaduneko or with the Furai, and then recall her with the Magatsu Storm and give you the chance to actually trigger her ability two times for two Soul Blast. 
But if this is good enough for her to actually see play, I doubt it highly and I don't think that she fits in Magatsu Storm. Um, besides that, Rui will be just part of these weird Grade 1 Nubatama cards that can be tacked and are quite nice on paper and certainly good in some situations, but just face a lot of competition in Grade 1 departure. So like Oboro card, Fuki and Ujihime. Uh, it really will be part of these great ones that we will see occasional play, but are far from a staple um, status. But the one great uh, one promo card, the one great one promo card, the one promo card that, in my opinion, is very good is uh, the Maiden of Radiate from Neon Nectar. So, what does Maiden of Radiate do? It has count and regard your token units in the same column as this unit cannot be chosen by your opponent's card abilities. And act on regard circle, counter blast one, rest this unit and call up to two plant tokens to regard circles. And if your opponent's vanguard is greater for your greater, one of your vanguards gains power plus 10k until the end of turn. So, um, of course, I wanted to try this card with Peony together, but I figured out quickly that they're way better ways to actually fill your field and I did not like that um, Maiden of Irradiate was in rest. It did not help the aggression of the deck a lot, but this card is a perfect fit for the Usher archetype. So Dream Spinning Usher and Flower Maiden Usher both want to retire cards from your field. And Maiden of Irradiate, like many totem, gener totem token generators, helps you a lot to fill your field. Um, what I just like a lot about Maiden of Irradiate is that it's an act skill that you can easily use every single turn. Outside of that, it's quite similar of the auto on place effect of Flower Maiden Usher. So it is quite more consistent, also costs a counter blast. And what you actually want to do with the Maiden of Irradiate is that you have, if let's assume you have the Dream Spinning Usher on your Vanguard Circle, you can call the Maiden of Irradiate on your back Regard Circle and one, one of the sides, rest her with counter blast one, then call it two tokens. You retire these two tokens for so blast one for the act ability of the um, Dream Spinning Usher. Call your Usher Flower Fairy token on the left side, right now in the example is on the left side, right above the rested Maiden of Irradiate. So this will trigger the ability of Usher that she will get plus 10k because now there are two ushers on the field and Asha will also get plus 10k because we use the act ability of the Maiden of Irradiate. So now our Asha has 33k and depending on you, if, you if you chose Force 1 or Force 2, it would be either a 43k attacker with 1 crit or a 33k attacker with 2 crit. If we now have a second Asha in our hand, we can play it which will grant our Dream Spinning an additional critical. But the nice thing about it is that it's not bad for the, ra for the Maiden of Radiate to be in rest because the boost doesn't influence the power of the Asha Flower Fairy token. But the most beneficial thing is, is that she not even help like most totem generators to actually make your Asha Flower Fairy token, she also protects your Asha Flower Fairy token. So a big problem was that in matchups like Overload, Blade Master, Blade Master, Majesty Lord Blaster, there are so many matchups that your Asha Flower Fairy token could be easily retired. But that's not the case here because your Flower Fairy token is protected from card abilities. So your opponent needs to hard attack and hard crash into her. And let's say your, flower, your Asha Flower Fairy token survived. Um, you can just generate uh, another one next turn because you can use the act ability of Maiden of Irradiate one more time, generate a second Asha Flower Fairy token, which will increase the power of Asha to 33 of her own ability and of the Maiden ability. And um, she will also get a crit from her own ability. And then, of course, you, had, you have to add the bonus of the uh, respective horse marker that you chose, which is very powerful. And even if your Flower Fairy token was removed by battle, you can just make a new one with your Maiden of Irradiate. So all in all, it's a great Asha support card uh, from all of the decks that got supported, which are in this case just uh, Witches and Asha. Asha is of course a superior deck, it's a solid rogue contender, and it's of course great.
that a deck like that got solid support. So, all in all, that was all we had for the promo cards that we received this week. And that's all I have to say. Ciao.